the second coming of Christ, or the rapture as some call it. Although, rapture as a term, is not found in the Bible. But somewhat, it is widely accepted, in the description of the second coming of Christ. When Christ shall show up in the sky, at the sound of the trumpet, to receive his followers, both the resurrected, and translated to heaven. Some also refer to the events, of Christ's second coming as eschatology, another term that theologically means, the study of the last days. Whichever, the point is, that the second coming of Christ is an assurance, well captured in the scriptures in every clear term. Although, it has been a subject much talked about, with much interest and concerns in Christendom. Divers' views and opinions, have been shared in this regard. And it didn't start today. It has been a much talked about interest, even from Christ's times. Sometimes, with mixed feelings. And at others with yawning, about the exact time. The chronology of events, to look out for, that will precede it. Or usher it in. Some have even attempted the explanation of it. From a human point of conception. And others, from the angles of biblical interpretations. This inquest started shortly after Christ's departure. But even before then, the concern about the coming of Christ. The end time, had been a concern. Even while Christ, was here on earth. There was a point in time, when the disciples have had to go to him privately to ask him, to tell them of his second coming. What signs, should they be expecting as a herald? That the end times, and his second coming are here. Christ didn't have to rebuke or reprimand them. Because he knew it was important. Instead, he answered them and guided them accordingly. See Matthew chapter 24 verses 3 to 15. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, shall be preached in all the world, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. He continued in verses 21 to 24. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, and in verses 29 to 34 he says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes, of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming, in the clouds of heaven with power, and great glory. And he shall send his angels, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, 
ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass, till all these things be fulfilled. In verses 36 to 44 he says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house, had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered, his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think, not the Son of Man cometh. Christ explains here, that, the end time, or the time of his second coming, is something to be watchful about. He equally gave them some indicators, of its eminence, and asked them to study it with understanding. However, as time passes this concern continued to grow, probably because not many people had access to the scriptures and explanations of the Lord, in this regard. On this note, Apostle Paul had to write again to the Thessalonian brethren. This writing gave more clarity, about the second coming of Christ. And that was the only best way. He could assuage the yawning, fears, and apprehension of the Thessalonian people, as regards the Lord's second coming. In his admonition, he said, he won't leave them ignorant about the last days, or the coming of Jesus Christ, with particular regard, to the fate of those who were gone. He said that those who have died, holding the faith, have merely fallen asleep, and will be awakened when the Lord appears. And for those who were alive, he urged them not to be hopeless, like the unbelievers. That Christ's death and resurrection was the proof that resurrection is a certainty. He explained to them that Christ died and resurrected, to prove that resurrection is possible, and that those who have died believing would be made to resurrect. Like Christ when the trumpet, which shall herald the return of Christ shall sound. And for those who would still be alive then shall be translated into a new nature, that will allow them to ascend to the sky, to meet with Christ. He explained that all these events, shall take place in a matter of seconds, when the trumpet is blown. He further stated, that, the dead in Christ, shall be the first to resurrect to meet him. And those that are still alive, shall follow suit to catch up with him. All in a matter of seconds or a twinkling of the eyes. Is this admonition by Paul important and necessary? As regards the second coming of Christ? Of course, yes. Very very important and necessary. Why is it important and necessary? The Bible answers that, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 19. It says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. What is Paul saying here? What Apostle Paul was saying here is that, Christians' faith transcends earthly existence, or life here in this world. That Christians live here on the earth, but have heaven in view, and this expectation will only be realized when Christ returns to take them along with him to heaven as he has promised. For this is a promise, and it was Christ himself that made the promise. We see this promise in John 14 verses 1 to 3. Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. This has been the hope, and comfort of all believers in Christ. And we wait for it with enthusiasm and optimism. And this informs why we can endure, 
and forego anything for this hope. It also entails the reason for the euphoria, and the joyful disposition of many Christians. Even in the face of danger and troubles? This hope alone, makes the second coming of Christ very crucial, and paramount to every Christian or believers in Christ. And we all that are Christians, await for it with utmost optimism and enthusiasm. The coming of Christ is a certainty. And the signs as espoused, and given by the Lord Jesus Christ, are already here with us. As we saw it in Matthew chapter 24. It talked about wars and rumors of war. What are we seeing and hearing today? The most recent one is even with us now. What about pestilence? COVID-19, and its variants among other signs. You can go and read Matthew chapter 24 to the end. It is therefore high time we prepared for Christ's second coming. Through repentance and acceptance of Jesus Christ. As Lord and Savior by those who are yet to do so. Because it is coming, it is only the prepared Christians that he will take. Let us pray. Repeat this prayer here before I finally pray for you. Lord Jesus Christ, I come unto you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner, but I now come to you in repentance. Forgive my sin dear Lord. Give me salvation and redemption. I promise not to go back to the sinful way again. Thank you for accepting me. For I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Now, let me pray for you. Dear Father Lord. I pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that infant. Who have heard your word here, and have decided to follow you. Dear Lord, forgive their sins, remove their names from the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Henceforth Lord, protect them, guard them and deliver them from evils. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. We want to give you another interesting video to watch next. Also, our team would appreciate it if you could like this video, give it a thumbs up, and share it with your friends on social media. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to not miss out on other exciting videos that we post practically every week. Click on any of the videos you will see on the screen carefully handpicked for you to enjoy at the end of this video. We love you.